The Ibadi school has been named after Abdullah ibn Ibad al Tamimi. He was a spokesperson of the oppositional movement in Umayyad times. Intellectual leadership and scholarship of the school, however, goes back to Jabir ibn Zayd, a tabi'i and eminent scholar of fiqh and author of the Diwan. The school has some distinctive theological teachings, but features hardly any difference in its fiqh as compared to Sunni schools of law. Main centers of the school today are North Africa, East Africa and Oman. Islamic religious pedagogy in Oman. Now, as to the existence of schools in the region, evidence of famous madaris in Oman can be found starting from the 3rd century after Hijra. This is not um, very astonishing, actually, as Oman as a region entered Islam in the lifetime of the Prophet so the earliest schools probably came, came about in uh, the first centuries of the Hijra, but evidence, written evidence of uh, the first Madaris goes back to the third century. The fiqh schools of Mahbub ibn al-Ruhayl in Suhar, the school of Musa ibn Jabir al-Iskawi, which have both been established in the third century, are among the famous examples just like the school of Ibn Barqa in Bahla, the school of Al-Hassan, Ibn, Ahm Ibn Abi Ahmad al-Nizwi, and um, other schools of the 4th century. An important impetus for the development of educational institutions in the region was initiated by the Ya'arubi Imam Bil Arab bin Sultan, Ibn Malik. Now he reigned in the 17th century AD and obviously um, Bil Arab bin Sultan had just built his fortress Jibreen and had a visitor from Jarba, another center of uh, the Ibadi school at the time and an important center of it until now, Omar ibn Said al Jarbi. He visited the fortress and gave advice that to enliven this fortress it needs scholarly activity. So Bil Arab bin Sultan founded a fully fledged, fully financed schools, school with uh, privileges for teachers and students. He gave out scholarships to many students in the country and this is one of the first um, foundations, one of the first cause for scholarly uh, educational um, development in the country. Famous schools of the following centuries are many and they have left an impact to the present day. We may name among them uh, the school of Al-Khalili in Samail, the school of Nur al-Din al-Salimi of the 19th century and the school of Muhammad al-Khalili. The graduates of these schools have dominated the intellectual sphere in Oman for a long time and uh, their students are still dominating it now. We use the term Fiqh al-Madrasa in our title. This needs some explanation. The term Madrasa or school refers to a physical institution. It also refers to an educational community and an educational methodology. It may refer to a school of thought. In conjunction with fiqh, fiqh meaning understanding, literally, and the knowledge of the practical sharia rules that have been deducted from their sources, technically, it describes the, the educational and financial administration of schools, teacher and student responsibilities, and supervision. The term fiqh al-madrasa to this meaning is an innovative term. It has been used by the co-author of this paper in the edition of Sheikh Jaid's book. Traditionally, when we say fiqh al-madrasa, what we mean or what it alludes to in the literature is the jurisprudence of a particular school of thought. 
but we are using the term in a different way in that it describes educational and financial administration of schools, teacher and student responsibilities and supervision. And the, the case studies involved. Talking about Sheikh Jaid, a Sheikh al Rais, Sheikh Jaid ibn Khamis al Kharousi, known as Abu Nabhan, was born in the beginning of the 18th century AD in Al Ulya, Wadi Bani Kharous. The historical era Sheikh Jaid lived in spans the Yarubi state to the beginning of Al Busaidi rule. The Yarubi state brought about an initial unification of the country, but had ended in a state of civil war and unrest. Busaidi reign introduced a new phase of hegemony and a restoration of Omani rule, but was not undisputed internally. Particularly the beginning of the Busaidi reign was characterized by a weakness of central power.